We don't see the world correctly, right? This is the world. This is a map of the world. All of us know this map. It doesn't look unusual. It's just a map. This is the way we see the world. Let me show you how an economist sees the world. This is how an economist sees the world. It's weird. It's distorted, right? I mean, we know about the American obesity epidemic, but this is a whole other level, right? What is this map? This is a map of the world where the size of the land area of the country is proportionate to its percentage of global GDP. So this is literally how an economist sees the world. An economist sees the world as predominantly a story of North America, Europe, and possibly Japan and China. That's it. That's what they see in the world. That's not the only way to see the world, though. Here's another way. What if we looked instead of economic activity, a topic that's obviously very relevant to those of us in this room, number of mouths, bodies. That seems like a good way to think about the world. This is a map of the world as seen through the eyes of a demographer, where the people, the population, the country size represents the population as a percentage of global population. Now I'm going to ask you to do one thing while I flip between slides. I'm going to ask you to focus on Africa. Take a look at Africa. Looks like the Africa we think about today. Now I'm going to go back to how the economist sees Africa. And I'll alternate between, but just stare at Africa. This is stunning to me. Right? An economist literally has trouble seeing Africa. And yet I will argue to you that that is possibly one of the most important developments going forward on the next 30 to 50 years, is the emergence of Africa and the population boom that's happening there. Well, you know, there's very few things you can say with certainty in the world, particularly the world we're in today. But I know you were all given notebooks. So if anyone wants to write this down, I'm about to say something that I don't mind any of you holding me to. And I'll say this with 100% certainty. If any media in the room, you can quote me on this. Seriously, take your pen out. This is really important. A child born today, 17 years from now, will be 17 years old. You guys get that? You write that down? All right, why do I say that? I say that because demographics, we can see into the future. We actually can see into the future with reasonable certainty. We know where the populations are growing. We know where they're shrinking. We can look at birth rates. We can look at death rates. We can look at mortality. We can get a sense as to where the population is going before it goes there. This is stunning. We have literally a wonderful view into the future. So let's take a look. This is the map of the world um, as seen by the population estimates for the year 2050. And what you see is this population boom we all talk about, it's not happening in North America. It's not happening in Europe. It's not happening in China. They had a one-child policy, which they've now changed, but that'll take time to ripple back through. It's not happening in Japan. So that first map I showed you of where the world's economies are biggest, that's not where the population boom is happening. Here's where it's happening. It's happening in Africa and India. Stunning, because those happen to also be the areas with the fastest economic growth. And so we are going to have, for what I believe, the first time in perhaps ever, <laughs> actually ever, a convergence between income and population. And I believe when those two megatrends collide, sparks are going to fly. And when those sparks fly, there's going to be some big impacts to your industry as well as others.